Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery in Lake Forest, California to talk about planting pumpkins! Isn't this cool? We've got our pumpkins in now and fall is in the air and it's cooler and of course it's getting a little hot next week but, but we're going to take it now. It's cooler and I, I'm just excited to start getting that fall feeling. So, what I've done is we've got all different kinds of pumpkins here at Green Thumb for sale. So I've taken some of the different ones that we have and we're going to plant them up. And basically all I did was I cut the tops off and I scooped the gunk, gunk out of them and poked a few little holes in the bottom so they'll drain a little bit and we're going to plant directly in these pumpkins. So let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to be using, when I, when I do, it, do this, I'm going to be using the EB Stone potting soil. This is a really good run of the, uh, not run of the mill, but this is a really good product. It's uh, reasonably priced and it's good quality. So that's why I like to use it. Okay, so the first one we're going to start with is we're going to start with a little succulent one. And just this little cute little pumpkin, nini cute. And we're going to put this little guy in here. Now I'm not going to need a lot of soil because the soil is pretty much on the root ball. So I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to pull some of this soil off because we don't need all this. Well, the nice thing about succulents is they have really small root balls and it's really easy to manipulate them and put them into small areas and they're gonna last a long time. So we're gonna just kind of shove this little guy down in here. And of course now I'm gonna, after I'm done, I'll wash this guy off. But really, that's it. Simple Simon. So now I'll wash it off and it'll be all pretty when I'm done with it. But but this is this is so easy, guys. I mean, it took me, what, two seconds to do that? So that's my first one. That's a Calancho. So he's going to bloom now for a couple weeks. Now the thing about these pumpkins is they will hopefully last quite a while. And as they do deteriorate, you can actually plant the whole thing in the ground. Or in this one, you can put it in a little pot. And as it deteriorates, it's actually going to give the plants some nutrition. So that's kind of neat. So the next one I'm going to do, this is a little Crushula, and I'm going to stick it in this pumpkin. And we have gourds, we have different, different um, types of these little guys. And again, this is a succulent, so it's real easy for me to manipulate this root ball and just shove it down in there. It's so simple. And again, these will probably last a while. Now when you water them, these guys, because they're succulents, you can water them middle, minimal, minimal, minimally, let's say that three times fast, and that should help it not to rot the pumpkin so quickly. And these little ones are pretty dry, so they, I would imagine they're going to last a long time. And there you go. Done. So simple and easy. Now if you want to, you can put a little gravel on top there or a little sphagnum moss if you want to to kind of cover up the dirt, but that's that's easy. And these could be done as table decorations for your little Halloween fall Halloween slash fall party parties coming on. Okay, the next one, we're going to do this little guy. And we're going to do another succulent arrangement in there and I've got the Calancho's going to be my center point. Now center point now this one, I can put a little bit of dirt in, so I'm going to put a little bit of dirt. It's not so critical since this you're going to do, um, it's going to be in the pumpkin and the pumpkin will take out some of the moisture. I don't think you really need to use a cactus mix in here, but if you wanted to, you could. Nice thing about that too is that it's going to help you not have to water if you don't, we don't want, we want to try not to water these as much. Now I'm going to go ahead and just pull this apart. And I'm going to put it on, um, split it. That's what's another nice thing about succulents is I'm going to split it and put it on either side of my calancho like that. And then I'm going to stick this little hen and chicks in there with this group. Now I might, I don't know that I'm going to have to put a whole lot of soil in here because it looks like we've got it pretty full. All right, I'm gonna shove that down in there. Give a little adjustment. Now when I water these, that'll get some of that soil down into the little cracks and crevices that have been created in between. 
and I'm not doing on these little guys I'm not going to do any fertilizer but when I get to the bigger guys I'm going to put a little bit of osmocote in there I'll show you when when I get to that so and you can also use pencils chopsticks to kind of help get the soil poked down into these little cracks and crevices in here and there's a pretty good hole right there so Give a little shake and a little more on this side so now we have this one so that's pretty quick freaking easy and there's different colors of calanchos that you could use I like the calanchos because they flower um, and then these guys are going to hang down the side. So again, these are going to last a pretty good time. I'd imagine these will go about a month or so since we're not watering them a whole lot. May even go longer. Okay, so there's that one. So now we got, we're going to go into, this is like a gourd. And it's really hard. So we're going to put a cyclamen and a pink splash, pink and white splash in here. And so I'm going to need some soil for sure because these are little. So I'm going to pour some soil in the bottom. Fill it up to about half. And then again, these are quick. Quick, quick, easy. So this, these are quick, quick, easy little projects that you could do at home for like, like those little get-togethers or gifts. Uh, I think school started up again. So for the little gifts for your teacher, you know, I want to be on the good side of teach, right? And the kids, this is a real fun project for the kids as well. And you can also, one of the things that, uh, when I was doing some research for this, because I've not done this before, so I've, this is my first time doing this. Um, they also said you could do these pumpkins with seeds. So like if you wanted to plant some radishes or you could do sunflower or just some beans or nasturtiums just to just to have the kids see how the seeds will grow and what you do is you go ahead and put the soil in there plant your seeds in there do it like you would a pot and then as the seeds come up depending upon what you planted you can enjoy it for a while once it starts to rot then you just plant the whole pumpkin in the ground and that's simple Simon and it's a fun little project. All right, there we go. Nice and easy. Okay, so now <clears throat> this next one we're going to be using, this is a white pumpkin. And when I was hollowing it out, there was a lot of really good meat in this guy. So I would imagine if you are into cooking pumpkins, these little white pumpkins would be a really good choice for that. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna put one plant in here, simple, simple. This is a variegated portulaca. And this one is a perennial, so he's gonna stick around a while. And again, this would be one that you could plant in the ground or plant in a pot once it starts to rot out. Oh, I don't need that much soil. Let's see, because he's gonna fit right down in here really nicely. Just kind of get an idea of, I don't want to try to, but portulacas, there's a perennial portulaca and an annual portulaca, and there's also a weed portulaca that, that grows here very well, and it's edible. Um, I've seen it in fancy uh, restaurants in their salads. You, if you only knew what that you were eating a weed. Okay, so I just pulled it out of the pot. This is not root bound, so I don't really have to do a whole lot to the roots. And I just plop it down in. Now with this one, I do need a little bit of soil on the edge here. I am going to put a little bit of Osmocote. So I like Osmocote. Oops. Let's do it this way. I like Osmocote because it's simple. You do it twice a year. So every six months. Um, this guy, okay, he's nice and full on that side. This guy here will hopefully last for... I don't know, I think it's going to last for six months, but it'll last for a little while before you have to do something with it. You can always pull these out and transplant them 
you don't have to trans transplant the pumpkin because they can stink a little bit as they're they're rotting. Um, not so much with the skin because I think the the seed and the center goopy stuff is more the stuff that starts to stink and look smell funny. But um, you could just pull them out of the uh, pumpkin, and I'm just going to sprinkle some of this osmocote around the top here and then every time you water it'll give this guy some fertilizer so there we go now this as it grows is going to hang down over the edge and I thought it was really cool because of the variegation kind of pops the, the white part of the pumpkin so that's pretty cool all right now we're gonna have this guy now this guy I'm going to plant up with a, I think this was kind of a, a type of a gourd. I'm not exactly sure what this thing is, but but it was kind of, it's a thin skin and it's really hard. And when I was cutting it, it was like wanting to crack. I'm inside of that one, I'm, as my centerpiece is, I'm gonna do, this is an ornamental pepper. They are sold as an ornamental pepper, but you can eat them, it's just, we don't know you know, they're, they're not being grown to be edible, so if you do decide to eat one of these, I would let it let it grow for a while before you start eating on it. Um, <laughs> but we do sell these as peppers during the growing season. There are a few of these varieties that we do sell, and they are hot. So I loosened that one up because it was, as you can see, root bound. So I just wanted to loosen the, so the roots a little bit. And I'm going to need a little bit of soil to get it up to the right. Now when you plant these, you want to give yourself a little lip from the top of the pumpkin to the top of the root ball. Your soil level should be level with the, the root ball level. Okay, so that's got me in the right spot. And I'm going to put with this one is I'm going to put some Dusty Miller, which is this guy, Dusty Miller. And I like him because he's white. And he's got really good texture and I think he's going to add some nice uh, contrast to the purple of these is purple and red this pepper it's really pretty and so I'm going to I need to put a little soil in here on the side because these root balls are a little bit smaller than my four inch pepper here and the dusty miller is going to get pretty big <laughs> so with time this you'll probably be taking this this arrangement apart once once the pumpkin goes you're probably going to want to take it apart and plant these in separate spots these guys can actually get about two to three feet wide and they do get a yellow flower but it makes it the flowers kind of ugly and it makes the plant get all weird so i always tell people just to print off the flowers because really, I like this one for foliage. Now you can do whatever you want that is your plant, but I like to pinch off the, the, the flower. Okay, so now I'm gonna tuck this down in there. And see how it gives that nice contrast of, of color and texture. I'm gonna squeeze that in there, okay. And then my, my next favorite go-to plant is the alyssum, white alyssum. And white alyssum, we sell it year-round. It, it grows, it's an, we call it an annual. I've actually been able to get it to live a couple years just by pruning it, pruning the old growth off the bottom of the, of the plant. And I've actually got them to stick around for a year or two. But I like it because it flowers pretty much all the time. Let's see what time I'm just gonna hang down and it hangs and they're really easy to i can squeeze my root ball a little bit here so i can shove it down in there nice and that's going to hang down and that's going to give us some white contrast and do that over here too shove it down in there okay now I've got some space in the corners. Now I can fluff this out a little bit. I got some space in the corners. I need to put some soil. And I'm also gonna throw some Osmocote, put that in there too. Well, about a teaspoon. 
we're not doing a whole lot on here because it's not going to stay that long. I'd imagine it'll go through October. It should. Now, again, don't let it sit in water. Don't let these pumpkins sit in water. So if you put them in a saucer, uh, or I wouldn't put them in a saucer. I would just water them somewhere, let them drain, and then put them back where it is that you have them. Don't let them sit in water because they'll rot a lot faster. So just water the tops. And I wouldn't necessarily really soak them either because the pumpkin's going to give you some moisture anyway as it deteriorates. So just kind of play it by ear. But okay, so we fluff this a little bit. I need one more soil right here. One more. Okay. Left this out a little bit. And here we go. So that's a nice fun one to do. And now the piece de revisons is my big guy. So this one here is is perfect this is like a big color bowl so i'm going to be putting a lot of fun stuff into this one this one is going to be my arrangement for my my center table and these are coleus so i'm going to stick them in the middle and they're pretty much the same depth as the pumpkin so i don't need to do a whole lot of filling in soil on these guys Coleus are, um, they do get flowers, but I usually try to pinch the flowers off, or at least when they're done flowering, it sends up a little stem. When they're done flowering, I like to pinch those flowers off of there. And if they get too tall, you can pinch them along the stem, pinching meaning cut. And um, you can save those little cuttings and plant them in dirt and they should grow. Or you can put them in water and they'll root and grow but they are a little cold sensitive. So when it gets cold in the winter time, and if it gets down to freezing or close to freezing, and yes, we get frost in Southern California, um, they will usually go. They'll, if they're sheltered, I've had a few. I live in Rancho Santa Margarita and it is, does get cold there. Um, I've had them winter over in sheltered areas. So they can survive, um, but I don't, I tell people they could die in the winter time. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw in some little fun fall things. This one is a chrysanthemum, and we do have our chrysanthemums in right now. And to me, when I see this, I think fall. That just says fall all over the place because we get these in the fall in the, when they're flowering. We also get them in the spring when they're flowering. They flower for about, mm, maybe a month if you put them in the ground if you put them in the ground they will go somewhat dormant and then they start spreading by roots underneath the ground and then they'll come up and flower through the spring and then they die down again and kind of spread and do the same thing in the fall and then this one is a pentis. Um, I love pentis. They are an awesome plant. They attract hummingbirds and butterflies. They will take full sun to a part sun. And these also can have a little issue with the cold. Um, I have mine in a sheltered spot, so it stays pretty good for me and there's lots of cement and things around it so it, it holds the winter heat so I get good results with them but they flower all the time if they're growing they're flowering okay so now I'm going to throw in my one of my favorite fall plants this is called a chrysandra and it's just screams Halloween and, and fall because of the yellow or the yellow the orange flower and I'm going to stick that over in this spot here because I want to contrast my two colors here and it matches the pumpkin so nicely 
Okay, so there we got that. And then I want something to trail down. So I'm going to use this guy right here. And I think I'm going to put him on this side because I want him to contrast my other chartreuse over this side. All right, this guy needs to be readjusted. He's leaning. There we go. Wasn't behaving himself. Okay, so now we're going to throw this one is called uh, Lysomachia or Creeping Jenny. And it's a chartreuse color, which I love. And this guy is going to hang down over the edge and give me a trailing effect, as you can see there. And then it's going to match into this little chartreuse color here, and then it's going to contrast these little colors here, which is nice. Okay, so now I'm getting pretty full here. So I'm going to put, yes, this is a African daisy, osteospermum, and these bloom when it's cool, in the cool ones. Now this year they actually kept on blooming. I think we, until it got to be a hundred and something, it was pretty cool the whole time. And I think they thought, oh, this is spring. I think I'm gonna keep on going. So I'm gonna stick him down in here. And give us a little yellow daisy. Uh, come on, guy. All right, so you can see that there. Then I'm going to finish off with a few pops of color because I have a little cra some few little cracks and crevices. These are called celosia, and these are actually a summer annual. So, but by the time this pumpkin goes away, um, these guys will go away too. So it's it's just kind of a we're just using these uh, these as a filler. I'm going to have to put some soil in there because these root balls are a little bit shallower than my other plants. And this is also a good time to get those because this is a concave pumpkin. So there is some holes there where it caves in that you'll need to put some of the soil. He's up a little too low. Okay, and then so I'm going to fill in some of that dirt before I start filling in the rest of the holes. Okay, so if you like what you see here, make sure that you hit the, hit the click button, or hit the click button, hit the, hit the like button, so that it will help us get these videos out. Okay, all right, so now on this side, since I've got some oranges, I'm going to throw this purpley one in here. I guess that's, I'm gonna throw that one in. Cause that would give us a nice contrast of color. In that spot right there. Then for these two, I'm going to do, I'm gonna do an orange and a red. And then over here, I could just have room for a red. Okay, I can barely see my daisy flower, but that's all right. Okay, so now, throw a little bit of Osmocote in there. And in around. So I'm always really good at making messes. But there we go. Now this, this is a prettier side. There we go. So this is going to look so cool if you were to put it up on a pedestal in, in your front patio or front porch area. It will give you lots of color from now until probably December, I would think. Hopefully it'll stick around for that. So again, there you go. 
planting some pumpkins. So if you like what you saw again, please click, click the like button. Uh, if you want to continue to see these videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell to let you know when we do get new videos. And thanks for watching and have a great day.